Hello everybody and welcome to the second part of the UFC 5 Community Day Tournament. 32 players started. We are now down to our final eight. $1,500 on the line. Thank you for joining us over here at the ESFL, the Esports Fight League. My name is Bailey and I'm joined as always by Mr. Bruce Lee, Rob. And Rob, we have had a cracking tournament so far. Like we said, we started out with 32. We're down to the final eight. How excited are you to, to have these guys play for some money on the line, man? Oh, yeah. You got the whole UFC 5 community all working together as a well-oiled machine. And that's what you want to see. Shout out to Primetime NEC, GFC. They did an amazing job setting us up, handing us the virtual baton, if you will, Bailey. And now we got this eight top eight quarter finals. And this, this tournament has already been absolutely heating up. I might need to take off my shirt, but I can't because it has the logo on it. But yeah, Bailey, and I'm freaking ready to do this with you. And this is going to be a sick event. It is. I mean, listen, like you said, we've got all the community coming together today. Prime time we're hosting the first part of the show. We're now over here at the ESFL to do these final eight. It has been a cracking tournament so far. Obviously, the game has gone through for a lot of developments. Today, we are highlighting mm. the alter egos. So these final uh, three rounds of the tournament are going to be with pre-selected matchups that we'll see. But it's all about how they use the picks, which I think adds a bit more strategy. But anyway, let's have a look at the bracket and see who of the eight made it through from the final 32. So from the left down, we've got Fadenator, who's a name you'll definitely know. Dirty Dave made it all the way through. I'm the GOAT, Deprexmacy, Driz, Suave Jamie, Spooky, and EK Mixups. Now, if we look at the road they took to get here, Rob, a lot of them have already fought some top competition. Yeah, for sure. You look at the right side of the bracket, Spooky kind of sneaking his way. And Spooky's a guy that I think is very underrated. D Dynamic Striker has been grinding the game since the beginning, and I'm surprised he was able to get by Easy Work GG. Now you see him in the quarterfinals against Mixups, who got by a guy like Nazneem. And then you go to the to the upper part of that bracket, you see Driz versus Suave Jamie. Suave Jamie able to beat Trixie. I think Suave Jamie's obviously going to be the favorite in this tournament. And then on the left, you saw Dirty Dave beat Ed Parker, the grappler, utilizing some good striking i mean this is crazy then you have fadenator bailey and fighting against 3 dave then you have i'm the goat dex premacy i mean these eight are insane i see i mean i know all these guys and, and i can't wait for them to collide and i and i think that this is going to be well you, you you bring us in bailey and as far I'll as the bring rules us in. Well, you bring just, us in baby just down the bracket there i mean if you see yeah. you know dirty dave he had to get past ed parker in round two which is a great win to sneak on through there incredible EK warrior was beaten by dex premacy that's a great win right there so guys who are looking good so far tonight don't forget oh, yeah. Suave Jamie had to get past Trixie. Obviously, Suave Jamie, a top competitor, but that's still a tough matchup. So these guys have come through. We're here, and we do have Fadenator and Dirty Dave as the first matchup. But let's talk about the what's on the line here tonight, Rob, right? Let's go back to that. The winner tonight is going to get $1,000. That is the first place prize. $1,000 for the winner of this tournament here tonight. Second place is going to get $300. Let's go. Third place will get $100. But we're also giving away $100 for Fight of the Night and $50 for the performance of the Knights as well. So there's extra money to be won. Someone might be able to go home with all of the bonuses and the prize money. We'll see if that happens. Now, I mentioned the picks are set in motion. So the first round of this bracket, which I guess is the quarterfinals, it's going to be alter ego Charles Oliveira against Michael Chandler, because that's who he obviously fought, I believe, with the alter ego. The second round will be Rampage's alter ego against Dan Henderson, which will be super fun. And then we've got Ben Askren against Masvidal in the finals, which is going to be a complete uh, you know, mirror match. Well, not mirror match, the opposite, a uh, mismatch, a clash of styles. So it's going to be an interesting tournament as we make our way through this, Rob. Yeah, that is very interesting. And I wonder how the, the picks are going to go. You know, who gets first pick, who gets second pick. I don't know if you know that. But yeah, Ben Askren, I mean, versus Jorge Masvidal in the, fi the finals, you said? that That's incredible. That's incredible. Yeah. That's going to be a clash of styles, like you said. Yeah, oh, I'm super excited oh, to see these no, hang alter on, Hang on. Sorry to interrupt you right there. There has been a last no minute change. It looks like We're the finals back. are going to be Connor versus Eddie Alvarez, which will be different there as well. All right, so that makes a lot more sense to me. Now, you know, I, I, like I believe ben that's great. I know, but <laughs> listen, it's it's on the coin toss and it's on your ability as a player. You could get either right. of the picks. You know, this is this is uh -huh. part of it. And hey, man, this is this tournament. This is the specifics of this tournament and how it's running. It's not Very your true. standard tournament. We're doing something different with alter egos. It's part of it. You signed up to play it, and the money's on the line. So there we go. The first round, though, Rob. 
these guys are ready, you know. Uh, Fadenator and Dirty Dave are pretty much ready to go for the first of the quarterfinals matchup. And these are best of threes as well. So they're going to be able to switch some things around and we're going to have a good time. So let's get through to the first matchup. We're ready to do this thing and see who's going to be heading to the semifinals first. What do you think of these yeah, picks this... here, Rob? Uh, let me see. This is going to be a oh, crazy man. matchup. Fadenator versus Dirty Dave. I mean, this is big for this tournament right now. Let me check out these picks. All right, so it looks like... Okay, Dirty Dave hovering over... Okay, we already know the picks, but Dirty Dave. So does Dirty Dave get to... Who gets to pick first, Bailey? Do you, do you know... Fecky in the back, do you know who... I believe we had a, Yeah, we had a coin toss in the back coin to determine toss. who was going to okay. get it. Um, okay. They go to a best of three. They can mirror if they want, but they will switch after this one. So essentially, you're getting the pick locked in for the first matchup. It's a best of three. So if you get oh, Charles cool. and you beat me next round, I'll get Charles. Yeah. And I might beat yeah. you. And then if they want, they can mirror match. So... It that's is still fair. fair. It is still pretty yeah. fair. You can't say much yeah. about that. That is fair. And that's exciting because these alter egos, I think personally, in my opinion, is the most exciting thing that UFC 5 has offered us as far as content. Like these alter egos are pretty exciting. So be able, being able to watch the top tier players, you know, utilize them in, in the in this quarterfinals, semifinals, and the finals. I cannot wait to see what, what's going to happen here. Yeah, but... Uh sounds like we're getting some uh, some some fight background noise there not entirely sure but we're just going to come back to us for a second here while we uh, i mean these guys have had uh, a couple of seconds to get this first match up ready you know the wranglers in the back will have a go we'll just double check what's going on uh oh no I, yeah so actually it looks like they were lagging so much the fight has started and we're just we should just go straight to it guys i think let's jump in let's just go because we've Plenty of fights to go. So round one, we're a minute and 40 seconds in. Top position for Fadenator here, who gets Oliveira to start things off. Chopping away now, building some GA. Dirty Dave on the bottom with Chandler. Not a good place to be, Rob. Not a good place to be early, especially with Fadenator on top. So much experience. This is a best of three, though, so this is going to be awesome to see how these guys make adjustments throughout this series. But yeah, on top, Oliveira. Let's see what he decides to do. And a nice deny there. He's going to go Ooh. right in the side saddle. Yeah, that's always a nasty position. Big damage to the block, even if you are blocking these. Dirty Dave doing a good job with the timing. Tries to move out just as the block gauge breaks down as well. As we are getting some some little lag from there and there, but we'll see if, if this is consistent. You know, we've had the whole 32-man tournament so far. We've been pretty good, but here we go backside now. Go to the back sit and already trying to hunt for the submission, looks like, from Fadenator. And that's what Fadenator's going to do. He's going to put you in bad positions. He's going to look for that finish. And right now, the back is where the destination has brought us. And this is kind of interesting because it's so early in the fight, and you're already seeing Fade Nader able to control Dirty Dave on the ground. There he goes, tries to escape, but no, you know, Fade Nader's going to maintain top position, and Bailey, and he is dominating this fight so far on the ground. Yeah, well, we know Dirty Dave is very good on the ground, but, you know, not necessarily do we see him on his back, especially when you've got, you know, Michael Charlie. He's not the best off his back. We rarely ever see him on his back. When you've got Oliveira on top of you, not only have you got the ground and pound threat, you've got the submission threat as well. So you've got to be super diligent. Fadenator has been striking things tonight. You know, he had some great uh, performances early on. Uh, F Faddy the Baddy, I believe he's being called here tonight, Rob, because he's been playing so well. So Faddy the Baddy now banging out the grappling. And now in this sprawl position, I believe that was a denial for the side control sit out. So strange to go for that. Hard to pull it off. But again here, it was a little bit... Fatty the Batty and still yeah. on top. Fatty the Batty just doing some good damage here. Dirty Dave is losing that stamina battle early. These shots are taking away this the stamina. It's you know, these gut shots are not good. And finally able to get to his feet and, and, and maybe he's gonna break off here. It's looking a little suspicious here for Dirty Dave, who has such elite wrestling too. So so impressive Ooh. to see Fadinator dominating that category. Yeah, bangs him with a straight right down the middle, which is good. But uh, unfortunately, not a lot of damage dealt there from Dirty Dave. Spent the most time on his back. It looks like he got a few significant strikes off. So there would have been some exchanges on the feet, first of all. Here's an uppercut that we didn't see. Mm. That landed pretty clean there as well. But the, the stamina difference is already starting to add up. And when you've got a pick like Michael Chandler, you're losing stamina early, Rob. That is not going good for you. Yeah, not good for you with Michael Chandler. He'll gas quick. He's got a lot of power. But already again, that uppercut lands for Fadenator. Connects. Drops a bomb on Dirty Dave early in round number two. And we saw in the replay, he dropped that in round number one as well. Fadenator on fire. Fatty the baddie is going in here, Balian. Moving forward, outside leg kick. Fakes the right hand. Putting a few combinations together now as well. Ooh. 
Eddie Dave trying slip. to give it back. Yeah, we'll see if the stamina does factor in because it does look slightly worryingly low there. But of course, we mm. have got a best of three, so adjustments are going to get made after this one, regardless of the outcome. Now going toe to toe a little bit more. Fadenator not really clearing the space. You know, I find when I play Charles Rob, you, you need space to, to, to get your striking going. But he's standing toe to toe here with Dirty Dave. Shot to the body was nice. Yeah, great point. Standing his ground in the middle, kind of utilizing some back steps. He really wants to, to land that uppercut. He, he wants to find that home again. And there's a beautiful little sneak takedown there from Mr. Dirty Dave with Michael Chandler early. And if you're a Dirty Dave fan, this is what you want to see because Michael Chandler, especially with Dirty Dave at the helm, is very dangerous on top. So let's see how he tries to utilize Michael Chandler. Ground and pound, probably going to be the, the avenue here. Eye control here now as well. So yeah, Dirty Dave, terrifying in this position. We've seen him smash people Denied. apart and there. Denies the inside hooks. And that's a couple of good elbows there. What, three or four landed? Didn't do too much damage, but going to score points halfway through this round. With a little bit more lag, Rob. A <laughs> little bit we're of good, lag. At least we're not, we're not losing any of the fight. So, uh, you know, we're just sort of hanging for a second. But for people at home, we are going to switch the streamer after this fight as well. So hopefully that will fix these issues. Yeah, because we need to see this fight in that smooth, buttery connection because this is huge right now. And now you're seeing Dirty Dave take that top position. Fading there, just, you know, being patient down here, but he is eating some shots. Yeah, you think he would he wants to move. sit to guard half guard, but he doesn't seem to be any rush. Trying to get the get up off, but Ooh, I guess holds it's him, really and holds hard, him down. Yeah. It's tough to get off against Dirty Dave. Fading Ed obviously shown he can grapple. No qualms about doing that in the first round. But here, now gets the half guard. Maybe he can work back to full guard from his position. But the problem is, Dirty Dave's done a good job of just shutting down this whole round, Rob. I mean, there's only a minute left on the clock. Fading Ed has not really had any chances. Yeah, besides that, like, early uppercut of Rock he got uh, early in the round, I mean, it's, uh, you know, Dirty Dave able to kind of rally in this round and get a little momentum. There's the leg popping over, though. Triangle, maybe, no. He's going to use that to sweep him, but no. Dirty Dave's like, I've been there, bro. I got the flick on Bleak right now. I'm going to go ahead and go stack guard and drop some bombs on you. Ooh, oh, oh. vicious. I mean, like, broke through the block, half head health damage. I mean, that is a way to come. Oh, off that was after the bell there because we've got sick. some delayed audio. I heard the bell yeah, go. I was like, like, what's like, going on? What's going on? Uh, we are going to switch streamers. Don't worry, guys. So we'll, we'll clear up these issues after this round. But yeah, I mean, way to come back there, Rob. Right? That first round, definitely all faded it. But that round, all Dirty Dave. Yeah, that's a lot of uh, blue boxes being checked for Dirty Dave. Four categories. You do have that rock for Fade and Nader, but it could be 1-1 one, one here, uh, depending, depending how you see it. So let's go third and final round to see who takes this initial fight in this best of three series. Uh, yeah, this is going to be great. Fade and Nader in the red and uh, in the blue, we got Dirty Dave. Dirty Dave. Leading with the rear upper guys, Fade and Nader, which is interesting. You know, high vulnerability, you walk in with something like that, but... Trying to put some damage on the block. We'll see how I believe that was blocked, that leg kick. As we never get another freeze. There we go. Back to the action. Exchanging jabs right now. For the looks for the pull counter, but no overcommitment from Fadenator. So nothing doing. There's a pull straight, though, that lands. And we'll see who goes for the takedown. Because in this fight, Rob, whoever got top position has won the round. So is, who's going to shoot the takedown is my question. Yeah, let's see. Fadenator is threatening with that uppercut. But Dirty Dave seems to be making those reads. You see him pulling almost adjusting mid-fight, and that's what these uh, high-level fighters do. They make so many adjustments, but still fading and really trying to go for And there it is, Balian. Beautiful timing on that takedown by Dirty Dave right in the side control position, and here we go. Can he maintain? Honestly, I feel like I'm in the Matrix with some of these uh, lagging artifacts we're seeing. You know, it's, it's just kind of crazy. And he's straight back to the feet there, Rob. Oh, the hip toss. No, oh, late denial, though. We're good. Back to the feet. Even Stevens, three and a half on the clock. And look at this. This is what I mean, toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Oh. Fadenator is just planting the rear uppercut left hook. That works nicely. I think I just saw Black Cat walk by twice, Bailey, and I ain't going oh, to lie. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I mean, Dirty Dave looking pretty good. Both guys looking pretty good, and there's the clinch attempt. He's, he's going to go ahead and try to get redemption. He's gotten taken down once, and, and Fadenator is a veteran, and he's standing his ground right now with Charles Oliveira, standing in the pocket, daring Dirty Dave to strike with him. And Dirty Dave's like, you know what? I, I beat Ed Parker in the last round. I'm ready to go. Oh, oh. Fadenet is just chaining those uppercuts together. I mean, they do big damage. There's they no do. head movement from Dirty Dave. And, you know, most oh, players, him oh, up. high crunch. Job. And that's, that's big damage. That's big yeah. damage as well. That counts for the judges. And now he's in 
Oh, oh no. Before I can even finish my sentence. There we go. Half guard top position for Faden. A lovely sweep. And that's the danger of being in that guard to Charles Oliveira. Damn right, he went sneaky beaky on him, and Fadenator swapped position when it was looking a little bad for him, and now, baby, he is in side control position. Watch out for these elbows, but no, he's going to go ahead and shrug him off, be like, I'm going to be in half guard. I'm going to deny this on top. I'm going to go to full mount. No, you're not. These guys are countering each other like crazy. They are indeed. I mean, if, uh, if all the fights are this close tonight, we we're going to be in for a long night of fights. It will be great, but Let's so go. far, it's really hard to kind of say who's winning this one right you give them both a round of peace <laughs> yeah Adenate has got this side saddle though if he can land a couple of these elbows that might be enough to steal the round definitely it's all about that damage if you can uh chip away a little bit at your opponent those judge those judges love it but the judges have been kind of weird tonight earlier in the tournament with some sussy decisions but on top still fadenator posturing up trying to land some damage that blocks being tested and there's the bell but we still have 25 seconds left someone needs to go fire that guy blowing that whistle or that bell <laughs> so the timekeeper's out of sync <laughs> we'll see i mean we talked about the stamina playing a factor you know you submission wise nothing really came out for fade and wasn't able to take advantage of it we will go the distance there we go and we've gone straight to the winner right there we see his fade and if you check the stats i want to give it away for the people at home but fade and will take the first round here in the best of three, Rob, the Charles Oliveira pick gets it done. I mean, there are ways to to, to you know, implement a game plan against uh, against an Oliveira. But what do you think swayed it to him? Oh, two judges gave him all three rounds there, Rob. Even that second round, which is crazy. Yeah, I guess they 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 really like the uppercuts that Fadenator was landing. He was landing a beautiful uh, free grab uppercut. Sometimes stepping in like you you saw. Uh, Bailey and and also from the bottom positions, he was able to kind of counter the top play of Dirty Dave. And if you're going against a competitor like Dirty Dave, he's like Khabib when he was a child wrestling bears. So he's crazy on the ground. So, you know, when you can reverse those positions, you're in a you're in a good uh, position to win the fight. So that's just how good Fadenator is. What's his nickname? What are people calling this guy right now? Baby Fatty. Fatty the what? The Batty. Fatty the Batty Pimplet? Y yeah, OK. <laughs> but I mean, listen, he's been putting on good performances so far tonight. One down for Fadenator, just because we have it here. So Fadenator's journey so far, he had Megatony in the first round. Then he beat Rep, Rep, I don't know who that is. Rep X, X, X H, Reps. Tough fight. I do remember catching, Rep X. I remember catching that fight because yep. he finished that fight. And that's what yeah. people were calling him Fatty the Baddy from that performance yeah. there as well. But there we go. 1-0 in this best of three. Let's go back to it. Round two. They're going to switch him round. Fadenator's now got Chandler. 30 Dave gonna lock in the alter ego Charles Oliveira. All right, let's see. Let's see how they utilize these fighters as they switch switch out. Um, so yeah, Fatty is gonna be on Michael Chandler. He's gonna have that big power. That uppercut's gonna be landing, but 30 Dave's gonna have all the tricks, all the uh submissions from the bottom, the the jujitsu of Charles Oliveira with that long striking, those teeps, those knees, those elbows. So this is gonna be a good matchup, but yeah. Um, Dirty Dave has his back against the wall, ladies and gentlemen. He really needs to win this right now. So the pressure's on him, you know. The tournament hangs in the balance. This is huge. It does indeed. Cam Fraden to get it done with the John LePick, or is Dirty Dave going to be able to use that ground game a bit more effectively this time? Goes for the push kick, but gets crowded. Eats the straight right. There's an overhand. Boxing pressure so far from Fadenator, Rob. He's just going toe to toe. Yeah, taking, taking the oxygen out of the arena right now, putting that pressure on Dirty Dave early. He knows he's playing with house money. He's got the win in the bank, and he's going to play loose, and he is playing very aggressive early in art. And that right hand was brutal. Like the left body kick, but this is the problem with, you know, the Oliveira pick. You need space, and now he's back to the fence. He cannot stay here. He's trying to lean on that head movement to get a counter off, but, I mean, I would advise circling out, Rob. What do you think in this position? Yeah, I think so. You know, T circle out stay away from those haymakers but you know dirty dave seems like he's trying to stay out hey. he's trying to stay away from that fence he doesn't want to get pushed too far back so he's trying to stay in his ground and yeah you don't want to you don't want to be on your back foot too much Ooh. Ooh, rear uppercuts body, to the body. uppercuts baby maybe you know fadenator realizes i can chip away that stamina the submission threat starts to deteriorate Ooh. lead up and then a little back step as well straight back on the pressure with the lead jab and then another rear uppercut to the body chaining those together now it's fatty the baddie and there's a rear uppercut into the overhand which he just sways out of the way fatigued but that could have been nasty 
Speaking of the Matrix, he looked like Neo, you know, leaning, dodging a bullet right there from right. Mr. Fadenator. I mean, that was crazy. But man, Fadenator's been able to land these uppercuts so accurately and, and, de and devastate Dirty Dave. Hey, that was nicely timed. Doesn't get it, though. Well done by Fadenator. Still that was a on sick the defense. Feet, trying to keep the center. That was a nice slip to the outside by Dirty Dave to get away from that uppercut this time. But those rear body uppercuts are landing. Left hook, though, is a big weapon for Charles Oliveira. Cracked him with it there one more time. Jab straight lead uppercut. There's another rear uppercut. Both of these guys are loving the uppercut tonight. They really are. And, and Fadenator's taking a little damage. He's got a nice cut on that on that eye. He's got to be careful. I think on that right eye. Ooh, and he eats another shot. So Fadenator's got to watch out for that left hook from Mr. Dirty Dave. But they are just exchanging in the center. Oh, that was so close. I don't know if the right hand landed for Dirty Dave. He is getting that block counter off with the left hook nicely as well. On occasion, looked for it right there as well. Obviously, you have to time the block on the same side as the strike that lands, so he can only throw it off the right hand. But if Fadenetta realizes that, he can set him up. Oh, there's a right overhand just like that. Drops him, but straight back to the feet. Doesn't want to Man. stay on top. Doing the dust in Poirier. Is this sensible? Balian, Fadenetta is throwing kill shots. He's got the confidence to get that overhand going. And he's up. He is just throwing bombs. Rear uppercuts. The big overhand, and when he's not getting it to the body, the front kick! Oh, the rear up again again! Jab rear up oh the ball. He's baiting that out so nicely! And there you go. Front kick knockout. Game over, man. Game over. I don't even, I don't even know what level that move is on Michael Chandler, but it is an effective weapon that he has. When you don't throw a single kick all fight, but you throw a couple of front kicks, you know they're probably going to land. Very sneaky. Rob, when's the last time you saw a front kick knockout at like this level of tournament? In real life, he Tony Ferguson, he Tony Ferguson him, man. Oh my God, that was beautiful. And, and Fadenator was doing a great job. He was throwing those uppercuts. And then Dirty Dave was like, okay, I'm going to make a read. I'm going to slip my head. And then when he slipped that head right, overhand step in power, Michael Chandler bombs. And then, yeah, I haven't seen the front kick knockout like that where it's just ice cold. Fadenator's got some ice in his veins tonight. Fatty the Batty Pimplet is just on fire in this tournament and eliminates Dirty Dave, who took out Ed Parker. That's crazy. Yeah, I mean, you've got some chance in the chat of, oh, Fatty the Batty going, you know, that might be seeing it all the way through tonight, but that's 2-0 and o right there for Fadenator, and he will walk on through to the semifinals straight away. We've got someone banked in already. We're just getting started, Rob. Fadenator secures his spot, and uh, yeah, I mean, Dirty Dave, he had to come through Ed Parker to get here tonight, Rob, but, you know, Fadenator able to yeah. resist the grappling, force a stand-up fight, and then good use of the Michael Chandler pick, because really, that's how you want to fight with Chandler. You want to pressure, close the distance, and force the inside boxing, and that's how he got the knockout, so. Yeah, exactly. I mean, just really playing aggressively. I don't know if I've seen anyone play that aggressively in, in a tournament like this in a while, where they're just, like, stepping in, throwing super powerful haymakers, so... Fadenator is is doing it, and uh, he just beat a very talented opponent in Dirty Dave, and I cannot see, I cannot wait to see him in the semifinals, and I cannot wait to see who who his opponent is. And uh, Balian, where are we headed here on the bracket? Because I am itching to see these fights. Well, yeah, I mean, if you've been paying attention to the fights already tonight, we've got the next two guys who have come through some top competition. We've got I'm the Goat and Dex Premacy as well. So let's jump in. We know what it's going to be. It's going to be Oliveira. It's going to be Chandler. Looks like Bully of MMA, which should be, uh, I believe that will be I'm the GOAT. But uh, to be honest, it's always slightly confusing when the names are different. We might need some background confirmation here. Very true. And, and if you're just tuning in, I'm the GOAT got through um, AKA Dave in the last round and got through Get In Sparked and his opponent, Dex Premacy, got through CIA webcam, a dangerous opponent and a very game ek warrior so these two are about to collide We're about to get confirmation who's who in Ooh. the back feck it we need some oh. name checks baby we've got a quick quit perhaps they oh they, they muted the audio there we go so that's why we're gonna quit and restart really quickly there but yeah no problem no problem here as well so we, you know these things happen i guess at least we got out of there nice and quick rob you know but these guys have yeah. had some time to oh i suppose you know they've been fighting all night maybe the you know the fatigue's getting to them a bit the mental fatigue maybe that's a sign you know not fully concentrating true mental fatigue plays a big factor and you got the thumb fatigue you gotta keep those thumbs loose you gotta keep them strong make sure you keep them uh you know the calluses lubricated with lotion you don't want to slip actually lotion what? on the thumbs don't do it don't do it 
don't do it. All right. Pro advice from Rob. But I mean, this is a legit point to bring up. It, well, mm. we've got time while they're resetting this up. Mm -hmm. It's a 32 man tournament. 100%. You, you need to be able to stay locked in for an extended period of time, which is not easy. You know, we saw that when we did the Very true. ESFL live show in Vegas. You know, that was a massive tournament. It went on for like 10 hours the whole day, and the competitors had to stay locked in and stay. You had to fight every fight. Not only is your best fight, but every fight got harder as well. So it required more concentration. And that's exactly what these guys are dealing with. And not to say that's why he forgot to do the audio, but they're about to do best of threes and then another best of three. And then if they get to the final, they've got to do another one. So. Yeah, very true. And you're watching, sitting and waiting and watching your fellow competitors in there compete. Nerves are, are flowing hard and you're trying to stay cool, calm and collected as well. So you got the nerves, you got the bright lights, you got all these organizations, you got just so many people, so many eyeballs on you when you're in there. And it's just like a lot of pressure and it's whoever can handle that pressure the best, Balian, that is going to win this tournament. It's not who's the best player, but who could play the best when the bright lights are on. And we're in the esports fight league right now and it is on. This ping's looking good. 63 looks like obtain aura as Charles Oliveira. Do we know who is who yet? Yes, Bully of MMA is... Let's go. Thank you, thank and, you. And uh, Dex Premacy is Obtain Aura. So okay, Dex okay. Premacy, got Charles Oliveira in the blue corner. Beautiful. I'm go there in the red corner right there. Bully of MMA. So they are locked in, they're ready to go. And we've got round one between these two seconds, uh, second quarter final matchup. All right, here we go. I am ready for this. They are just locking in their fighters. Slowly but surely here, Balian, but um, yeah, so far, uh, Michael Chandler has been just throwing some bombs out there, so we'll see if Bully, what kind of approach these guys take differently from each other, because we're going to see a lot of variation in, in the way they, they choose to play these these alter egos. Who, who's your favorite alter ego? Do you have a favorite alter ego in, in this tournament right now? Or Oh, in the tournament? They, or in, well, yeah, in the just, tournament, I like the Rampage any. one. I do like yeah. Rampage. I play, you know, honestly, Rampage. mate, I'm getting I'm getting old. I play a lot of backyard brawl now just because it's fun. You know, five rounds mm -hmm. of carnage, three minutes. I do yep. really like it. Um, and that Rampage is always fun to play there. Uh, I like the Luke Rockhold Strike Force one, though. I am kind of partial Ooh. to that, you know? I kind of, you know, I like a good Southpaw kickbox. I think, are we still audio muted here? Or is this just coincidence? Because we've started this first round. Okay. Let's just keep going for now on this one. Straight off with the bat. Dex Premacy using those long rangey teeps of Oliveira. Obviously, we see Goat trying to return there with his own front kick. We know that's effective. We just saw it get a knockout. <laughs> yeah, you, we saw a uh, fade near flat line. So I don't know why. Got to watch line. out for those front kicks. Bully of MMA, aka Goat, yeah, right? Bully of MMA, aka Goat, walking down. He yeah, he kind of holding the center of the octagon right now. You know he's. And Oliveira's Dex Primacy is kind of just, you know, wading in, moving in and out, using footwork. Nice. Like that front kick. So far doing a good job of reaction, reactionary striking, you know. As soon as they get touched, they Ooh. fire back, and there's a rear uppercut that lands beautifully for Go and a takedown. Rolls out, though, stays on the feet, reshoots. It's a beautiful double leg. Love the chain wrestling. Gets top position, will cost him some stamina, and he now has to deal with Oliveira, but it will count on the scorecards. That was so beautiful, Bailey. Gets the uppercut and then, you know, charges forward, gets the the chain the chain takedown and just slams him. I mean, that's some momentum in the favor of uh, Mr. Goat. I'm I'm a goat. And now he's on top. Two minutes, 30 seconds left. Gets that deny right there. And, and, and Goat's starting to flow a little bit early here. Yeah, let's see what he can do. Posturing up. Now, just working the body, building some GA. Gets the side control off. Let's see. Dex Primacy wants to get those inside hooks. Can't do it. Eating a couple of elbows for it. Four, five elbows. We saw that exact same sequence already in the last fight. And we know that's not necessarily a good idea when that, that gets denied, that transition. The elbows are coming, so. Tries to sneak. And he's like, no, sir, not sneaking. But he was able to, uh, Dex was able to put him into, you know, full guard, a little bit safer. And you know how dangerous Bailey and Charles full guard is. So let's see where he decides to navigate Ooh. but right now michael chandler just posturing up pop him popped him with a shot a couple dinks plenty of sweeps that come off as well from this position not just submissions and there we go we've hey. seen it again we're seeing the same moves playing out here in these quarterfinal matchups everyone better pay attention i mean the same weaknesses and vulnerabilities are going to be there in this first opening round for the final eight of the community day tournament 
working the body, trying to build some of his own GA, short time on the clock to get anything significant off. You've got to imagine with The Rock as well as those takedowns, Goat is probably going to be winning this round, but it does depend what Dex Promise he can do now. Double hip fake goes over the top and goes for the guillotine. Why not run the clock as well? Burning the stamina with the struggle. And I believe, yeah, banking on the stamina being a little higher right there is Dex Premacy and pulls out. No Ooh. problem. Just 10 seconds left now, though. Yeah, that was close. That was close. A little stamina for Chandler. I thought he might have been able to lock that in, but a good job by Dex. And, uh, man, Go has to have taken that round because he, he landed that uppercut. You know, a lot of guys in this uh, tournament are landing that rear uppercut perfect, perfectly. I was going to say some crazy word right there, Bailey, but yeah, perfectly and, uh, and, and drops him. So yeah, go taking round number one, I believe, and uh, starting out this uh, best of three strong. Wouldn't be the first time you've made up words on an ESFL broadcast. <laughs> I'll tell you that. You're pretty good at that. Made up. <laughs> Here we go. Very Touching true. them up. Go in the red. Dex mm. in the blue. Both men done well to get to this point, but here's a best of three. If they get through this, they got the semis and then the finals. But now it's the Charles Oliveira. Alter ego, there's a takedown deny right there, though. Lots of stamina lost, and that dinged off the body there. Didn't do too much damage, but backing up his goat, and he needs to be going forward here, Rob, right? He does. He does. He's trying, he, and that was beautiful slips right there. Ooh, connects with that left hook as Mr. Dex coming in, you know, taking a lot of shots on that on that block, though, relying on it heavily, but he is putting the pressure on in this second round. He's coming out strong as Dex. He's trying to get this back Ooh. into his ball court. Nice right hook that came off there as well. Dex Premise, he's doing a great job of cutting the cage off right now. Those teeps, keeping him honest in against the fence. Got to watch out for that uppercut, though, from both men. There was a big one. To the body, and there's an uppercut in return. The uppercut is the, the shot of the night so far, Rob. Lovely roll underneath, and there's the uppercut. It's the uppercut tournament, man, and, 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 and Bully's doing a good job. Goes doing a good job of countering when Dex goes to the body. Uppercut, counter, boom, but lands that left on the clinch. And, and man, look at this pressure, man. He's putting, a, he's putting him in the cooker right now. He took to the head, touches ah. the body, single collar, but nothing doing for go pull Ooh. counter. Gets Beautiful. the pull off to stay away from that bloody awful uppercut that we've seen come back left Ooh. hook this time, though, for the goat. And they're just in there throwing bombs. Goat trying to fight off this pressure, doing a good job from Dex. Has a slight stamina advantage at, at the midpoint of this round. And these guys are just doing a great job pulling each other and staying out of that danger zone. Ooh, Ooh vicious body kick, Bailey. And that was nasty. And I'd love to see more of that. But they're, 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 they are the uppercut. I mean, why not? And then another one. Just keep back at the uppercuts. More shots here. Trying to get the fight finished. But there's too much head health left on Goat. And we talk about using the kicks, but he's been trapping him against the fence. Lead body kick to the turning side kick. You like that as well. Keep mixing up the targets, but look at this. Refusing to give up any ground now as Goat. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, Goat is in no. big trouble. Stamina is low. Dinging the body. Oh. Left hook lands. Dings him. Rocks him. Down he goes. Sits him down on the toilet seat, Bailey. These uppercuts are honestly insane. I can't believe how many of them have landed. And they're all just kill shots. There's almost oh, another one right there. Down. Go is throwing down, and he doesn't have much of a choice left as well. A minute left in this round. If he can survive, lead hook lands to the head, though. Turning psychic misses. There's his charge. Lead hook straight lands. He slips off the center line, pulls the uppercut, comes back to the body of the fly, oh and he goodness. gets blocked. These guys are throwing down, Rob. This is crazy. Only round two oh, and another uppercut. Oh, he's going hard, but he's out of gas, Bailey, and he has no more gas in the tank. And now Dex coming forward, landing big shots. And and earlier, Go did a beautiful job sidestepping that uh, spinning back into the body and countering Mr. Dex. But now, ah! <laughs> an amazing dizzy level changes right onto it. Oh my God, what a shot! I need to see the replay on that one. So well timed. I believe he sat down for was it a body shot? Misses the uppercut and just ducks oh, into oh. it. Insane. What great timing. Medic. Great job to throw it. I don't know if he was looking for the front kick or the knee itself, but there's been a lot of ducking under, which is why the uppercuts have been working. And that one just cleaned his clock. That's a win in the books for Dex Premacy in round one. Oh, that was that was huge. I mean, dang, Dex Premacy came out, flatlined him with that knee. That was dirty, ducked right into it. Sent him a car crash to the dome and Man, Dex looked good. He came out in that second round like a freaking banshee, and he did not let up, and he got the finish. I mean, he was drilling him to the body. Both guys were fighting. You saw Goat Bailey and trying to throw uppercuts. He did a beautiful job sidestepping that spinning back kick to the body, countered brilliantly, but just Dex Premacy just went crazy in that second round and got the finish. Man, what fight so far.
Not sure again why we we don't have audio on this one, but we're not we're not exiting. We're going straight through to the next one, so we shall uh, we shall adjust for now. <laughs> Let's go. I'm ready, okay. bro. I'm right, ready. Here we go. Switching the picks. Oh, he's changing shorts. You know, we just keep uh -oh. it uniform so we know what's going on. <laughs> Deck from seat now in the blue corner, of course, with Michael Chandler. So on the other side, we've got I'm the goat. He's got Oliveira this time out. All right, here we go. A switcher Ruski. So they could they, they could choose to mirror match here if they wanted to, right? This is is this the second fight? No, no, no. This is, this, this is round two. Um, okay. So yeah, okay, I'm, I'm confused. Three. But we'll see okay. if it goes to a three because yeah, yeah. so far right, right, right. it's just been the uh, two and oh for uh, well for not for one consistent pick. It's been a player. Fadenator went two and oh. So right now we'll see what Dex Premacy can do. Roger that. Michael Chandler is in his hands against the altered ego Charles Oliveira on the side of I'm the Goat. So both men have to switch the strategies. And there must be something to knowing the vulnerabilities of yourself in a fight you've just lost mm. and then getting the opposite pick. So surely you can try and exploit those same vulnerabilities. 100%. You, you definitely can. And also you can, you know, play off that momentum. You you see the pressure now from Dex. He he got that finish. Oh, it's a beautiful flying knee, though, from Go. Backs him up a bit. But yeah, he, he looks confident now after that first win. He's coming forward. He's he's putting on the aggression early. Ooh, lands a beautiful lead head kick right to that dome piece. Rear uppercut lead hook. I mean, just walking forward, Dex looking supremely confident. Oh, my God. The hands were down. <laughs> that was close. The hands were down so he could shoot that takedown, but gets it off with the ankle pick. Side control. And we didn't see any grappling last time, really. So we're going to see how this changes the matchup. Yeah, this is good. Charles, Charles, Charles Oliveira on top. Goat getting a denial, you know, slowing down the fight. He needs a win. Oh, man, he's dinking his head right there with some sharp elbows, Bailey. And this position is always interesting to see how the players, you know, want to play it. And he got Ooh, that side control off. We've seen people nice. go for that earlier on and... At this yeah. level, it's not always advisable, but sometimes that's the last thing they expect, Rob. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes you don't even expect it. When you get that, it's a huge play, a huge momentum shift. Now he's on top, landing body shots, taking away that stamina, and he's going to try to do the same thing, but he R2 flicks down quickly. Back to the feet. Here we go. Jab. Nice body work. And there's that knee again, but on the opposite side. Going to look <laughs> for that. A little bit out of range right there. I'm liking the head kicks coming out from Goat, but again, he's finding himself getting pressured regardless mm. of the pick, and that could just be a you know the the player style matchup right here. Single collar, but shrugged off. There are some great knees you have with with Oliveira, so we'll see if that comes into play. Left head kick lands there nicely as Dex Premise is moving forward, blocks the knee. knee. They exchange there though. You called that one, man. These uppercut hook combinations and. And you're seeing Dex coming in, but right now it, it's I'm a goat making him pay every time he comes in, throwing that shape straight down the pipe, and and here we go, a, a moment of, of of danger against the cage, but he he's able to uh, grab that clinch, Bailey, and, and and save himself a little bit there. Body kicks those straight, lead, those lead kicks on Bailey, body head. Yeah, I mean Chandler's kicking isn't isn't really the best, you know. I mean he got a did get a boost to after nope. the front kick, but. You can make anything work, really, especially if it's the last thing they expect. And then, of course, if the kicks are coming out, well, then the hands are going to be easier to land because they're not going to be used to the timing and the rhythm of them. So we'll see if that does play in his favor to set up the hands. But mainly for Dex right now, it's giving him a way to sort of close the Ooh. space because once he's landed the kick, he's now able to get into boxing range without eating anything on the way in. And now we're up to the body, lead hook, lead hook to the body, right hook, and then a left hook up top. Lovely work. And then a real uppercut, left hook one more time, double shot to the body. Another oh left hook drops him. And now just unloading the ground and power. Insane <laughs> combination there, Rob. Man, that was insane. Dex just came out of nowhere and just landed like the ultimate barrage of like mix ups. He's going to the body. I'm loving the way he's jabbing to the body. And I'm, I think Bailey is coming with like the rear hook or the rear uppercut. And, and he's going, he's throwing that lead body kick too. And he's just making um, go really pay and think about that body and simultaneously sapping that stamina. All right, here we go. We have some audio guys. Let's go. Let's go. Cool. I love the, the audio. excitement. Yeah, well, we need the audio. Isn't it? We Same. need it. Catches the tape. There we go. Turns him to the fence. Nice job denying the double leg takedown, though. Goat can lose some stamina for that. And now in this clinch position and then lovely takedown, but he's up. And look, he's right on him. He's right on him. He knows he's got to recover that stamina. 
body is weaker when you're trying to recover when you have low stamina and this time Ooh. he defends and counters Balian. so he's kind of making that read on that lead body kick from mr dex Ooh, uppercut man i mean i can't believe how many of these uppercuts are just coming out tonight <laughs> that uppercut meta shift man what what's going on here if you're goat right now rob what are you doing to stop this pressure all right if i'm goat right now i am trying to look for that flying knee i'm gonna try my best to defend my body and counter off of it and maybe just make oh is that flying knee, baby there it is Whoa. that's what he I needs mean, right there at a certain point you do have to bring out the high damaging moves the fight changing right. moves and those are the kind of things you can land i'm just so impressed with dex's pressure though rob and those combos yeah. he's been stringing together really well timed on that rear uppercut there as well just caught him a lovely little trip from the tie clinch, but Whoa. no straight back to the feet yeah you know dex is just kind of bullying goat right here in my opinion just really putting on like extreme pressure you know almost daring him. look at now making that read on the knee daring him to swing and just cracking him to the body again and again and just just detonating on him this is crazy Ooh. That uppercut's right there, man. I mean, he, he didn't commit, and that would have landed. <laughs> I love the kicks. They're really helping yeah. him cle keep him against the fence and then close that space. Jab your uppercut to the body. I'm a goat. Can hopefully time an uppercut of his own, especially because of all the level changes that we're seeing from Dex Premacy, but he's been very selective about his entries. Oh, the head kick this time. Oh, Elf man. Lead leg, the same thing. Lovely combo as well. He's got a Dex throw. On fire. He does. He does. He, he's just, he's on the back. He's got, I think he's uh, a little mentally fatigued right here. You know, he's getting overwhelmed and, uh, oh, 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 full pull. Yeah. Dex is, is flowing, man. He hasn't made a yeah, mistake this whole round. Everything has been landed. He's done a great job avoiding right there as well. That was beautiful to just read the opponent. What was coming out. Doesn't mean go can't turn this fight around, but Dex right now looking so good. Great head movement, lovely rear up cut there again. Double shot to the body, the left hook up top. That was the combination he's been oh going to, and this time he throws it again straight away and drops him with it one more time. Man, Dex is looking clinical out there. He is all over I'm a Goat right now, just kind of blitzing through his defenses, and Goat can't really do anything besides like a one power move at a time because he's going to have low stamina, he's going to be vulnerable, and he's going to gas out. So this fight, in my opinion, is already in the bag for Dex. It's just a matter of time, unless there's a miracle. Right, well, good highlights on that round, but it was all Dex Premacy moving forward, putting the combinations together, and definitely taking that round. And look at the gas tank as well. By the end of this round, that could be in a really dangerous place. Dex Premacy already up one, Rob. So yep. a win here, that'll be two and oh. He'd be moving on to the semis to take on Fady, Nita, Fadi the baddie, but there's a double leg into the side control position. Let's see what happens now. And it, I can't wait for that matchup because Fadinator was bringing some crazy pressure in his in his series. So these guys are going to be like two bullies colliding in there. And uh, I cannot wait for that matchup. But, you know, who knows? Hey, it's going to be tough because on the ground, he's got a stamina disadvantage. On top with Chandler Confident, goes right into the full guard, gets the deny on the right side, Bailey. And this is looking very suspicious. He's starting oh, no. to set it now, but there's... This is the problem oh, when no. you lose the stamina and all the investment yeah. in the body shots and that final attempt to squirm out might be it. He's bumping pretty course, good, but that's I mean, it. I don't know how many times he'd have to lock in a sub half, half the sub bar gone with that arm triangle. Great work there as well to mix in all the martial arts. And now with a really completed gas tank, Go is in a dangerous spot, Rob. Yeah, he is. He's in He's in desperation mode. He, he He's on tilt and... Uh... He's got the full flow magician on top of him. Mr. Uh, Dex Premacy just freaking in the ultimate alpha brain on it flow state. And he's just going crazy. He's going to let him up. He wants that knockout. He's just stumbling all over the place. <laughs> Moving forward with the jab. Oh. oh, my God. I mean, this is just the tension here for Goat not wanting to make a mistake. It's the body head changes that have helped these combinations land for Dex. He's always ripping high low. It was double body lead hook all day. And then he's going lead body kick or lead head kick just to keep mixing it up. There's a nice trip, but the up kick. Wow. Yeah, beautiful timing. Yeah, Dex game plan. This this fight has been so amazing to watch. Used the momentum from the first win. Kept it up. Kept that pressure. And yeah, the lead body kicks, the jab to the body and the uppercut. I mean, he's just all over him. Rear uppercut there. 
still seeking. And, you know, Dex here, we talked about the focus that you're going to have to have to fight, you know, potentially, I don't even know, like 15 times tonight if you come all the way through the tournament. But this is a, a really well-maintained game plan. And he's not hunting for the finish. He's just maintaining the lead and still trying to inflict as much damage as possible. Yeah. And there is... Mr. Dex on, or yeah, Mr. Dex Premacy on top, but you know, Goat is just completely obliterated here. I mean, he can't really do anything except survive and just wait till the judges give the decision or get knocked out or submitted. But he's fighting very valiantly to stay in this fight. Not much time left on the clock. You you said it there. You know, he did a good job to survive, especially during that hellacious second yeah. round. But I think we're going to get a two-zero sweep right here, Rob. I think. I think so. I think so. And, and, and Fadenator's got his hands full because Dex looks, he just looks different. This kid looks different when I'm watching them. He just, he looks, he looks slick out there. Don't judge people based on their appearance, Rob. He looks different. That's no concern of yours, all right? He does, though. <laughs> He's been looking, looking great here tonight. I think 26 on one of the judges' scorecards right there. And that round two, that, that was probably the 10 8, Rob. That wasn't even like, a round that was a 10-8 because of numerous knockdowns, although he may have got one or two. It was just pure domination. I mean, he uh, don't, couldn't land anything on Dex. Nothing. He was just standing there blocking and getting his body bombarded by artillery strikes from Mr. Uh, Michael Chandler, and uh, that was crazy. That was a dominant That was a dominant performance by Mr. Uh, Dex Primacy. I'm very impressed with, with, with that win, and, and there he goes. He goes into the semifinals, locks in that spot, and now he's got, a, he's got the creature, or excuse me, Fatty the Batty on the other side of that octagon, but uh, we still got more quarterfinals to go, and they, these fights are going to be crazy on this side, on the right side of the bracket. I like the way you described that artillery. Yeah, that was, that was pretty good. You are right, though. We have got Driz and Suave Jamie coming up next. These are our last two quarterfinal matchups. After that, we've got Spooky and then EK mix-ups. And we'll Ooh. be moving through. So, I mean, this is going to be a tough one, but we're going to keep the same picks. Let's go through and see who they're going for, Rob. All right, here we go, guys. We got um, Driz versus Suave Jamie here. And Suave Jamie is an absolute legend. If you don't know who this guy is, he got by pablo g or excuse me trixie got by pablo g trixie and suave jamie matched up suave jamie took that one trixie's a legend of the game suave jamie is here to play for keeps he is probably the favorite in this tournament one of the favorites but he's going against driz who beat wr maxi and he also beat Aaron crow earlier in the tournament so their picks are going to be driz charles Oliveira, balian and suave jamie with the power of michael chandler yeah, we'll see. I mean, it's the same as last time. We've seen Chandler win. We've seen Oliveira win. They both have advantages. It's the, on the player to take advantage of them. Of course, we all know how good Suave Jamie is, one of the most decorated players we've ever seen in the ESFL. But he can be beaten. And Driz is here to prove that tonight. He's had some good wins on the way. So let's see here, Rob. Who do you think the, the, the picks inherently favor in terms of the styles, Rob? Ooh, that's a good one. I've, I've kind of seen, like, in that last matchup, it seemed like uh, Dex was able to utilize his style with both Charles and Michael Chandler. But Michael Chandler, you have more power, but you don't have as many tools on the ground. I don't know. That's a hard question. I, I would say uh, I would say Michael Chandler, in my opinion, just Ooh. based on the performance so far from these guys. What do yeah. you think? I mean, I think if you give Suave Jamie a power puncher, it can be pretty dangerous. But, yeah, you know, there's a lot of arsenal in the toolbox of uh, Charles Oliveira. So we'll True. see who can make the most out of it. Long reaching hook to the body there from Driz. And trying to force his man back now. Rear uppercut. That's going to add up as well. Big exchange there, but some big chunks of head health missing from Driz after that. Right, right. And if you're wondering why these uh, competitors are constantly picking the same fighters, because we're playing alter egos. It's always going to be Michael Chandler versus Charles in the in the semifinal eliminators. But uh, it's been quarterfinal quarterfinal eliminators. And uh, right now, look at the stamina, slight stamina advantage there for Mr. Drizzen. Like the step through with the straight right there from Jamie. Putting it in the face of Drizzen, who looks like his lip is already split. I mean, he's looking like a Mortal Kombat character. Swap Jamie's looking for a fatality here, Balian, with those Look shots. Both trying to dink the chin with the straight right. Oh, little back step from Jamie doesn't come oh off, and goodness. he eats a three-piece combination. It looked like he was trying to step back and just, I don't know if it was a mistiming from Jamie or well done to capitalize from Driz, but he hit him with a three-piece and dropped him real quick. Yeah, that was pinpoint accuracy there by Driz and just taking 
advantage of that moment and dropping Swap Jamie. And now Swap Jamie is probably losing this round as a stamina disadvantage and Drizzen is getting confidence. Trying to bang on the inside. Jamie there just planting the feet, trying to slip and look for the big overhand. The problem with trying to move forward in this game as well is if you are moving forward and you get hit, you do take more damage. So the pressure style obviously works for so many reasons, but if you are going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe like that and walk forward and you walk into punches, they can do more damage. And Jamie's already been dropped this round. He has. And Driz looks real patient. Ooh, connects with that right hand as well. And so while Jamie's kind of plodding in, trying to land that power, trying to come back, oh. and there's that shot he was looking for. Right hand lands. Rolls underneath just about right there. I mean, that's not as good as a knockdown, but it's still some pretty good damage. Power advantage, obviously, with Michael Chandler. And that's what he wanted, the back step check hook. He got it off right there as well. I don't know. I'd say damage is almost even, but that's another big right hand right there. I think he's just a little bit ahead after that first round. But, you know, that's got to go for Driz right there with a the knockdown. 100%. Driz looked phenomenal early. Got that beautiful three. Hopefully they show that in the replay. But even at the end, you saw the straight from Driz, and then he, he countered, or he, he followed up with, like, that body hook. So this guy, Driz, his striking is absolutely sick, and uh, I'm becoming a big fan of Driz in this fight, but Swap Jamie is one of the best. Oh, he gets rocked early. A little injury right there on Mr. Oh, my goodness. Oh, the lead up and go. Sits him down. Way to chain the combinations together. Can't get the high crotch takedown, though. Looking for it. And they'll go back to banging it out on the feet. Oh, my God. The southpaw switch from Jamie here. Looks like it's opened up a few opportunities. Way to duck under, but just a little too slow in terms of what Chandler's able to do after he evaded right there. Couldn't follow up. Pressuring though from Jamie. Sequence. Beautiful sequence of defense and sways there from both of these guys. Now you see him Driz taking the center of the octagon, putting that pressure on Suave Jamie. Suave Jamie starting to huff a little bit with that stamina, and the head health is a little bit lower. So Driz still in control of this fight. Double jab is nice as well. I mean, if anything, it's getting Jamie to react. That was a nice time takedown, but it was. kind of had to cover too much distance. And look at that. Nice work by Driz, man. <laughs> Driz showing up Chucked tonight, him. Rob, taking it to a former ESFL champion. Definitely. Definitely doing good. Driz on top. And now Suave is able to get back up. See what he decides to do. Gets the back here, Bailey. And is he going to take him down? No, he's going to break free. Driz playing good defensively. Touches the body, lead up a cut, lands beautifully though. And Jamie now wobbling about. Teep up the middle, right hands, left hooks. Trying to march forward, but these shots to the body are hurting as well. Man, the accuracy on Driz is really, really impressive. Oh, there's another uppercut. He's trying to get these takedowns. This Jamie and Driz is, is all about the defense tonight. Yeah, Driz is very, very quick with his inputs, very reactive and. And man, Swab Jamie's starting to crack him. Finally gets that takedown. Power takedown. Slams him down. But the gas tank for Swab Jamie is very sus. But gets that denial early, Bailey. And maintains that control. Well, Jamie got this fight where he wanted it to be. We're in round two. There's not much time left. But he can start trying to implement this ground and pound. And just control, really. I think he's trying to just slow Driz down. And also just test the ground game. See if he can't get some free damage off. Yep, yep, yep. Half stamina for Mr. Suave Jamie, and uh, it's going to be an uphill battle. You know, Suave Jamie's able to win this one. That's going to be a testament to how gangster his EA Sports UFC 5 prowess Ooh. is. And there it is again. We've seen that so much tonight, Bailey, and that, that sweep from Oliveira. I mean, you know, everybody, every <laughs> player has pretty much hit that. you got to know that that's coming. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, these guys are all so good. They can probably, you know, they, uh, I bet they like to think that they're ready for it, but it's so quick that you just can't stop it. And there it goes off again. Top position for Driz with 20 seconds left on the clock. Jamie, unfortunately, wasn't able to hold this top position, so going to take a bit of punishment towards the end. But it has been a close fight, but Driz, I think Driz is still up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Driz is, is throwing some bombs there as the round is concluded. And you see there, was that a knockdown for Mr. Suave Jamie? I don't even remember him getting a knockdown, but I guess, yeah, knockdown for Suave Jamie. Very close. Yep. Could have taken that round 1-1, one, one, but it seems like Driz is going to win this fight for some reason in my eyes because he has that stam advantage. I mean, and, and like you said, Balian, Driz is just throwing like these crispy, perfectly placed combinations. There's like no fat in his striking, it seems. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that's also just 
the mental state, you know, that you can you can enter, the flow state, which yeah. we talked about again, you gotta find multiple times throughout this tournament. And it's mm -hmm. the composure, it's the relaxed nature, it's not trying to trade and get the points back or return the damage. What a lovely elbow, nicely tied by Suave Jamie, walked him forward into it. Oh my Jabs goodness. Straight there, trying to follow up for the finish. He knows he probably needs one, but he gets caught right <laughs> there. Driz coming forward now, double jab right hand. Jamie wobbling all over the place. <laughs> the way these two competitors are able just to kind of sneak in a power shot and connect and land and just devastate their opponent is so uh, exhilarating to watch. And and you saw Swap Jamie kind of get him with a right elbow there, but then you you see uh, uh, Driz just kind of connect with with Mr. Uh, Oliveira. And there's that flying, what's that flying teep to the face, a flying front kick. Great lead hook comes back. This is a good and fight, again, Alien. Yeah, this is a good he, fight. It's a great fight, and you just don't know who's going to land that next rock. And then try and set up a finishing sequence, and I feel like either guy could do it at any moment. There's three minutes on the clock. Very true. And Swab's been able to, like, sneak these power shots in, and the head health on Oliveira is is dwindling a bit, but, you know, Idris just has so much stamina to play with. It's actually evening up a little. Oh, oh my goodness, overhead. Coming, no Bailey, he's though. coming. No stamina. He broke through the block to land that as well, which is good work by Jamie. Two minutes 30 left in this final round between these two. This is the first of the best of three. Third quarterfinal matchup here. One more quarterfinal matchup after this. We've got Fadenator already in the semifinals alongside uh, Deprex as well. Deprex, Dex Primacy. <laughs> I can't forget yeah, it. There you go. I got it. There you go. Going away. And this is jabs. so interesting, Balian, because this round could decide the fight right here. And it seems like Suave could be winning the round. I, I don't know, man. I feel like he, <laughs> he's also taken some damage, even if he did get that rock knocked down. It just feels like it can end at any minute. Even a head kick would just smash through that block. But I don't think either guy's going to risk throwing one. The front kick's there. Something big. We've got the flying knee. If they can't. Otherwise, it will be an uppercut or a lead hook that gets well-timed. I love the elbow Jamie landed earlier, but to try and hit the same trick twice is also going to be hard. Oh, Ooh. it's an uppercut, though. Lead Next. one this time. And then the overhand right. He's dropped him, Rob. This is going to be it. He's going to get the short lead with the ground and pound now. No way to recover. Ooh. And it's a win for Suave. Jamie possibly down two rounds. Gets the knockout, Rob. That is so crazy. I mean, Suave, I mean, I think the round round two was pretty close. And then round three was all this the deciding factor. But how did Suave Jamie come back from that stamina disadvantage? How did he overcome the the a Rubik's Cube that was Driz season? I mean, damn, that was that was crazy. That's Suave Jamie for you, though. That's the that's why he is the legend from Ireland. Composure. You might hear that's... some songs coming on. Yeah. <laughs> Composure, Rob. I think that's your answer right there. Managed true. to stay that's in true. the fight, do enough damage that even if he was losing, he could always try and win it back. And right there, gets the finish in the final round. I mean, if you look at the significant strikes, he only landed 20 significant strikes through that entire fight. He was stunned six times, or he got six stunned, excuse me. So, you know, it didn't take a lot, but it was the well placed and well timed shots that were able to do the damage and get the finish. Yeah, 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 yeah. That that fight was incredible, and it was. It seemed like it was like one one. I think Swab Jamie stole that second round, and it was, it was all. It was for all the marbles there. Um, in that, let's see how the judge. Okay, so judges. Wow, they had the second round. Two two judges had that second round tied there, Bailey, and it looked like, but they didn't. Yeah, give well, us the it third. was it was two rounds. Uh, you know, to Driz, and Jamie needed a finish. He got the finish. He would have lost that opening round. I mean, this is a best of three, so they're going to run it back. Switch right. around the picks right now. But, you know, with money on the line, Suave Jamie yeah, has been through high-pressure situations. You know, you talk about how how much pressure it is to fight in the ESFL, even if it doesn't seem like it for outsiders. You know, th there's eyes on you. You only get this one chance, you know, and you are performing in front of everybody live. It does mount up and add pressure. And then you add a tournament to that, and then you add the fact that you've gotten this far in the tournament, and then there's money on the line. Suave Jamie has been here before. He's been in these situations. He's won money in these situations. So that speaks to it right there. Able to control, keep the composure in the third round. He gets them one. He's going Oliveira. Now Driz takes a Michael Chandler pick.
Yeah, and now Driz has to let that last one go. He he seemed like he had a good advantage, but he kind of let it slip a little bit, and Suave Jamie was able to overcome a little adversity, and that's going to give Suave Jamie a lot of confidence. Can Driz stay mentally uh, collected here? Oh, I might have misread those cards because chat is now saying it would have been a draw if it went to the judges. I, I think I may was slightly not paying attention, I guess, that I misread. But okay, we're good. Here we go yeah, for the, round two. Round two, they had uh, two judges gave it a tie. Ah, there we go. But here we go, round two. I like the calf kicks from Driz already pressuring. Jamie now with the longer striker. We'll <laughs> see if he can implement a bit more of his game, known for his Conor McGregor and other sort of kickboxes. So now not so much having to fight with the pressure boxing, but Driz might be able to take advantage of that. Yeah, we'll see what Driz decides to do here. I mean, he just needs to stay stay true to his game and, and stay confident. I mean, he was fighting so phenomenally in that first fight. It's just Suave Jamie just able Ooh. to find his moments. Ooh, nice little combination there. Nice exchange. Yeah, and then it's about when you get tagged, you know, because everyone plays differently and you play differently on mm -hmm. ranked as well. But, you know, you'll notice that Suave Jamie always tends to reset, let his head health come back before he enters into these exchanges again. You know, he's not rushing back to get in the offense, except he did right there, but this is, you know. <laughs> he's doing the opposite of what you say. He's listening to you, Balian. He's trying to throw you off. I think he was trying to throw him off there with that switch knee. Didn't come off, though. And we'll see if he can create some space to get some of these kicks going. Rear upper got to the body lands. And there's a takedown attempt already, at least to keep Driz guessing. Who can now force him to the fence. Driz can use this now. Get some of that boxing going on the inside. That all comes off the block from Jamie. There comes a couple jabs. Nice jab, jab, straight. Putting that pressure on Driz. Driz moving his head well. But these guys look a little bit more tentative this 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 round and, and not unloading as much as they were before. That rear uppercut keeps landing, though. That's going to do some big damage from Driz. Sent that one to the moon. And it banged off the chin. And I do think Driz has done more damage so far in this fight. The power of Michael Chandler. Is nice when you're unloading those big combinations. Oh, that's another Sneaks uppercut up the middle. Yeah, Jamie's Ooh. been able to, to land a few block shots. Counter? Driz is throwing in combination, but that's also going to cost the gas tank as well. Setting quite a high pace for this first round. Very even round as well between these two. Nice little teep from Mr. Swab. It was a nice calf kick from Driz earlier. I think if he's got some range attacks in the arsenal, that could bear well for him tries to follow up the double hook combination reaching though a little bit we will see if the stamina plays in it didn't really in the last one i know jamie's also down on the tank but if you're reaching in and missing those big hooks it's going to start adding up oh yeah and uh it seems like mr driz is a peter pan fan bailey because he is bringing out the hooks <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> or, um, I'm, uh, he is. He, I, that went over my head because I was reading chat. But okay, yeah. Peter Pan and Hook. All right, okay. I see what you're doing. And just for people one? in chat. Yeah, I did. I did. For people in chat who are who are talking, uh, the round two after this will be Rampage's alter ego against Ooh. Dan Henderson. And then the finals will be Conor McGregor alter ego against Eddie Alvarez. It will not be Askren Masvidal. It will be Conor McGregor versus Eddie Alvarez. Can't wait to see Rampage throwing some heat. Rampage versus Henderson. What a fun I fight. Know. His bombs I know. I'm so I can't wait to see Hendo too. Very slow, but it's gonna be great. He's still slow, huh? They didn't they didn't give him some speed. Uh <laughs> well, his footwork, you know, shuffle, shuffle. Yeah, yeah. He plods. Right. Huh? It doesn't plods matter. Around. It's timing. Timing beats speed, didn't right, it? Right, right, right. Oh, beat beats speed. Here we go. Catches nice it. Nice catch right there as well. And just gonna use that to walk to the fence. So he can get some of these combinations off. See if Jamie looks to trade. I like that Driz has been patient. That was a beautiful elbow right there. Jamie feels like he's definitely pot shotting with the Oliveira pick in hand, whereas the combinations, you know, they've slowed right down. It's never usually more than one or two. Yeah, and uh, Driz is doing a lot of damage, throwing a lot of hooks on the block of Mr. Swab. Jamie and Swab is, is really relying on that block, but it's getting dwindled down here. Driz is landing on it and... and well, as we go into the third round, he's not going to be able to... Oh, my goodness. He's landing big shots right now, Bailey. And Driz is connecting. Oh. Pouring with the jabs. I mean, this is tense. 
right now. There's 2.30 on the clock. First round went to Suave Jamie in the red. So far, I mean, this is pretty much even. Someone has a cut. I think they both have cuts, actually. There might be a nose issue for Suave Jamie also. But stamina-wise, it's not too dissimilar right now. I think Jamie's just trying to find his moment and just pull some offense out. Driz is slowly getting backed up now. Yeah, Driz is kind of beating up Suave Jamie, uh, in my opinion, in the second round. And it looked like Suave was trying to go for that takedown, but Driz was, like, using his footwork to stay out of reach for, uh, out of a few of those. And, and there's Suave digging to the body there, but Driz is connecting with his power. Look at that. Boom. Connects and wobbles. Oh, but there's the head kick and the takedown. Beautiful stuff by Suave Jamie. That's why he is a legend, Bailey, and oh, my goodness. And, yeah, he definitely needed that. Something definitive to now at this sort of critical juncture in the fight start swinging the momentum in his favor and he can incorporate the ground game now as well can he keep him down though for the rest of this round he's on the back now perfect for swap jamie he needed to slow down driss here and now he's threatening with that rear naked choke can he get it tries to lock it in right there no he decides to just use that as a, a positional change or is it a denial bailey and i'm not sure I'm going to continue. Yep, it's all good. <laughs> 10 seconds I left in the second denied. round. Right here we go. Yep. Trying to posture here up. We... Pulls it down. Not too much damage done by Jamie, but like you said, he got the rock before he got the takedown. Secure top position. Some, you know, control time on top of everything else that round. Can bank that round. I do think that first round, though, may have gone the way of Drick. So we've kind of got a 1-1 one -one situation again going into third, I think, Rob. Yeah, I think... I think Driz took that second round. I feel like he did more damage, and uh, I feel like he's in control of this fight right now. I think Swap Jamie needs to go hard and get this finish in this third and final round. But we will see Driz on top. Michael Chandler, he's gonna set, he's gonna let him come back up. He he knows he has him damaged. He just needs to land a few more of these Michael Chandler bombs, and, and, and that's all she wrote, I think. Really trying to find the home for those shots as well. It's been some good head movement on Swap Jamie. Some good punishment. But gone southpaw right now as well. Oh, we walk right into the uppercut. And this is exactly what Driz was waiting for. Can he continue to chain some offense together? The head health still flashing. The block is down. The knee misses oh. the lead hook straight. He's still in trouble here, Rob. I can't believe that lead hook didn't rock him right there. A little bit of luck from Swab Jamie. Swab Jamie trying to survive valiantly right now. Oh. Pulls guard. Oh. And sweeps him to oh. full mouth. Swab Jamie. Oh, my goodness. Talk about being under pressure, man. I mean, he had to pull that <laughs> off, and he's going for the full mount no, ground and pound. No. This is more damage than he's done with any ground and pound in these fights so far. See if Driz can escape this position before the reposture comes out. This is crazy, Bailey. And it seems like Driz has gets the better of Swap Jamie like throughout these exchanges, but then Swap Jamie just pulls like a rabbit out of his hat like a magician and just does these miraculous plays and finds himself in these dominant positions so jamie is a difficult fighter this to go against he's getting bombed right now bang. this is landing oh he cut him open there as well got the rock with the elbow Driz panics to get out he's got no stamina another posture up surely this is going to be it this is it going to be two and oh for swarm jamie another rock can he get another posture up rob Driz is out of gas. His head is discombobulated. The butterflies are fluttering around. His synapses have been oh. disconnected. The oh. neurons are not flying around anymore. His head is getting bounced off the oh. canvas like LeBron James bouncing a basketball failure. I mean, that was well worked by Driz to stay in the fight. Look at the blood all over the canvas now as well. What a crazy sequence at the end of this third round. And, and then he might have secured it. But now Driz is on the back and he's going to go for the get up. That was a crazy sequence, and now back up. Driz has done the damage, oh. but the flying knee from Swab Jamie lands. Here comes Swab Jamie bailing, swinging valiantly. Both guys are kind of out of gas, swinging for the fences, oh. and Swab Jamie connects. He got the rear up. I got fatigued as he was, stacking the guard right now. More ground and pound, surely. Oh my gosh. Driz is going to be all right. I mean, Jamie is just throwing the kitchen sink mm. at him trying to get that finish but also sometimes you extend combinations like that and it's not what you expect you think they're going to finish you might even let go of block or try and throw back oh he's been rocked oh he's really low the left hook dropped him he's got no stamina though rob i don't know if he can finish from this position can jamie frame he's taking damage he's taking out him it's over what a comeback there from driz in a fight and a round that surely he was losing
Incredible. Wow. What a switcheroo, man. A comeback from Jamie in round one and a comeback from Driz in round two. Switcheroo and then Driz opened up the snack pack and gave him the dunkaroo and that was just dirty. I mean, dude, Swab Jamie is nasty and I feel like Driz is getting the better of Swab Jamie throughout these fights, throughout these rounds, throughout these exchanges. But Swab Jamie just makes these crazy critical plays and clutches up and finds himself in these full mount positions and just destroying Driz's face and bouncing his head off the canvas. But then Driz comes out of nowhere, Bailey. And I mean, it's just unbelievable. It's complete madness in the octagon right now. I mean, it's it's crazy. 1-1, one, one, that's what you want to see. Now we go to a best of three. Ladies and gentlemen, who do you think is going to take this? Is it going to be the legend, Swab Jamie, or is it going to be the Driz who's fighting amazingly right now? Bailey, this is They both locked in Charles Oliveira. Interesting, okay. Because it wasn't it Chandler that won in both matchups? It uh, was. Yep. But they both want to go for Oliveira. So here we here go. We go. They're going to mirror with the Oliveira. Here we go. So for those people who are wondering how this format works, this is how it works. Round one. Tell them, Bailey. They get one person, then they swap, and then in round three, you can pick whoever you want. They've both picked Oliveira. So we've got a mirror match for the final one, and we're starting off with a high-paced fight. Already Driz trying to put the pressure on. They've both landed those rear uppercuts to the body. Man, this is very, this is perfect because you really get to see who is the better fighter here in the best of three series, especially when they're both using the same fighter. There's no advantages, there's no disadvantages. It's all to play for here in the third and final fight between these two legends. Deacon, that rear uppercut to the body again. We saw oh, Stamina oh. definitely play into it. Some calf kicks coming off now as well. We'll see if one of them decides to go south. Oh, misses the turning sidekick. Gets rocked big right there. And that is big damage early. And man, these, these moves that do well, there's risk. And you've just seen it right there, Rob. Yeah, spinning back kick and Driss made him pay. And he capitalizes. Driss is a capitalizer. He takes these little moments and he just fights so perfectly. But then Suave Jamie, let's see what he does. He's always been able to make big plays. And now he's starting to build some momentum, putting on the pressure on Mr. Driss, landing some uh, blows. Trying to move forward right now. But the center gets retaken by Driz, who, you know, he scored a big shot. You know, that's banking the round. He's winning the round right now. So let's see if he's going to keep the pressure on. We'll try and play a bit more defensively. Because if you give Jamie an inch, he'll probably run a mile. But that being said, yeah. he's getting tagged all over the place right now. He runs like 10 miles, Bailey, if you give him an inch. It's crazy. And Driz has been able to kind of, I feel like, slightly outplay Swab Jamie in these little moments, but Swab Jamie's kind of had to play like the uphill battle, but he's so good at at exposing uh, Driz's mistakes. So this has been such a crazy fight to, to watch and witness with everybody out there. Hope you guys are having a great time because, man, I'm at the edge of my seat. Right now, yeah, like you said, find the openings. Driz is the one putting on the offense right now. Oh, beautiful head kick. I mean, that was so well set up, and he's put him away. No, he hasn't. Oh, my God. How did... It was a sliver, Bailey. It was a sliver. I thought that was it. I mean, I was I know, calling me it right there. I just did a Goldberg. It is all. No, it's not. It's okay, all. Good. Here we go. <laughs> Half guard. Goldberg. All right. Jamie on the bottom now. That was a beautiful one-two head kick. Didn't get the finish. Going to get him back to the feet. And again, Driss able to get that early stamina advantage like he's been able to get in all the other fights, it seems. And, and now, Suave Jamie having to come oh. uphill again. But he's got his hiking shoes on. He's got his oh. hiking shoes on. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing here? I mean, it does he's look like Driz is, Driz is more busted up, which is the crazy thing. Ten seconds left. Nice slip to the outside. Right hand tries to fire it back. Doesn't land. It's a big aggressive shot. And he opens himself up. Gets tagged again right before the end of the round. Overreaching. And a lot of people in chat now start to say that Driz is locked in. He's got the composure down. Jamie needs to really figure it out right now, Rob. What do you think's going through his mind in the second round? Man, this dude is so freaking good. I have to stay locked in and, and be able to beat this guy. But that's what he's been able to do throughout this series. But Driz is him. He is, he's that guy. I mean, he, he was able to come back from losing that first fight in which he was ahead, Bailey. And he has that mental fortitude. He can do it. Looking Ooh. a little tentative, trying to set the jab first and throw off of it. Driz just stepping in with the lead hook. We've seen this when Jamie opens up with the bigger shots that he's getting countered. Driz is used to countering those looping hooks. So we'll see if Jamie can keep things a little tighter, maybe, Rob. Yeah, he needs oh. to. He needs to. 
As I say that, he throws an overhand to get slipped and check yeah. the hook. Driz is just so good at connecting with that straight Ooh. punch and countering off of it. That one right there, doo, 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 he's so quick with his inputs and his range and his timing. Oh, really loaded up on that big right hand there as well. And to be fair, Jamie does need some big shots to steal some momentum back. But sometimes when you're hunting for the big shots, it's when you stop thinking about defense so much and you, you kind of get set up for something. But Jamie been in these situations before. He was in this situation in round one. Deep to the body from Driz, keeping him against the fence line. Yeah, I'm not counting out Suave Jamie anymore because it's just like these quick moments where he finds himself on on top. So, oh, lands the right hand. See, uh, Suave Jamie just has so much composure in there. It's it, You have to get rid of him. You have to eliminate him. You have to knock him out or he's going to be there all night long. All night long. <laughs> I'm in bag, though, with face. some pressure. Rear uppercut. Yeah. And then again, whenever he throws that big hook, it doesn't land. And then Driz is kind of scaring me because this is when he's looking to attack straight after. Oh, the head kick lands oh. right on the edge of the range. Gets through the block, does some damage for a rock, but nothing more than that. And there's the right hook right on the return. Gets the pull counter off, but barely able to right there. Yeah, Driz kind of backing up a little bit and almost letting Suave Jamie, you know, get back into the fight for some reason. Driz kind of letting his foot off the gas, but he does connect with that right hook earlier, connects and rock swap jamie do you think it's a mistake Balian, for driz to kind of let the let the pedal off the metal oh that nice man <laughs> i'm just kidding um no dude i think he's cruising right now you got to stay okay. composed you got to be aware of everything True. that's happening i think he can pressure if he doesn't want to he's in the driving seat what he needs to do is just be aware of the traps that jamie is trying to set because jamie's all about reading those those holes and those patterns so be unpredictable and pace your fight out how you feel you need to all righty there you go and uh and now driz 35 seconds left has the back control and he, he like he said he is just kind of cruising oh this is a dangerous spot with Oliveira. not much time on the clock though remember in the last game you know if it went past 30 seconds we were like yeah submission literally can't happen you know so it was fine but subs come on pretty quick in ufc 5 so you know, you got to be careful. But again, another great round for Driz, Rob. Yeah, and so impressed with this guy, Driz. Just being able to do this to a, a, a guy of Suave Jamie's caliber is, is incredible to watch. Um, and, and this is for money right now. You know, this is Suave Jamie sweating right now in his chair. Both these guys' chairs are going to be drenched. The controllers are going to be broken. It's going to be crazy. Firing, chucking these hooks out here. Jamie just, oh man, lead hook straight was all it needed. The head kick came out of nowhere as well, but he's still on the feet. And look, this Jamie's pushing forward, Rob. I know Jamie is so good at this, plotting forward and, and, and creating chaos. Beautiful chaos in there against Driz, and Driz still holding his ground. And just, I, man, Driz's boxing is freaking ferocious. But Jamie has, has been able to at least make it competitive in terms of keeping the head health down. So Driz has been dominating, oh. but it won't take much from Jamie uh -oh. to turn this fight around. And then he drops in with an overhand. And this is exactly what I was saying. And he gets oh, the takedown man. as well. What a sequence there from Suave Jamie. You talk about being a magician, pulling something out of the hat. And this yes. is what I was tr trying to say, you know, he's been getting beaten up, but he has been landing. The head health is still in a position where he can finish this fight in this round like he did in the first of this best of three. And now he's got Driz against the fence, but Driz is still going to come for that chin as well. 100%. Driz is still freaking dangerous, but this is Suave Jamie. He's got so much experience. He went to the live event. He is a dang veteran in there, a marauder, and Driz is trying to figure out, how do I put this guy away, man? I've hit him with everything in the kitchen sink. I'm throwing everything at him, but Suave Jamie is still there just threatening with Charles Oliveira. This is a crazy fight. Someone's poured a bucket of red paint in the octagon in this fight. I mean, it is a wash. Surprise, they are not slipping right there. Frozen Roundhouse gets caught with a jab. If that had been anything else, that could have been nasty. Jamie looking for those moments. Driz, I think, like you said, Robbie's wondering, what do I go with? Because he doesn't want to let this fight slip away from him right now. Less than two minutes on the clock, guys. This is one apiece. It's down to this to move forward to the semifinals. Yeah, 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 for sure. And, and Suave Jamie has been here multiple times. And, and he is an absolute legend. But, man, this guy, Driz, has... I mean, he's already made a name for himself in the scene, Ooh. but right now against Suave Jamie, he is 
Oh, oh man, he ate another head kick, though. And see, Driz is slowing down a little bit, it seems. Oh, lovely two down the middle. Jamie answers with his own. Ducks underneath. These head kicks feel like they're the danger zone now. Both guys are ready to duck. Trying to come back with the check from the left hook with the counter. It was Jamie pressing forward. Man, the tension is mounting. Less than a minute on the clock. Someone has got to win this fight. I am feeling the tension right now. You're seeing Swab Jamie come forward and Driz kind of turtling up a little bit. Oh. Maybe maybe resting on his laurels from the early round. Driz kind of well, looked down. Might there's Swab Jamie just... right hooks him. He might be able to take it to the judges. I'm weaving in my seat right now. 20 seconds left on the clock. It was a rock from Jamie. Does he need a finish though, Rob? Does he need to come forward? He very well might. Jamie needs to. something big right now. There's rock right there. Oh my God. He slips it. Oh. Dang. Let it go to the judges. Don't press start. I want to hear it. But man, I don't... I think Drew took that fight. I think he probably did. Those first two rounds were pretty good. And there we go. We do get a flash on it. It is Driz right there. Takes the mirror match with Oliveira Man. and Oliveira. Man, what a what a classic fight right there. Props to both guys. The composure from Suave Jamie to pull him back and stay in the fight and almost get a finish in that final round. But that final best of three, when it's all said and done and they were mirrored, Rob, you know, Driz was looking phenomenal. He, he really was looking amazing and uh his ability to land these lightning quick combinations where you don't like you see it but you, if you blink you might miss it and it seemed like a few times swab jamie just didn't have his guard up and yeah. driss was just able to capitalize like just ding, ding, ding. and then you, all of a sudden swab's on the floor or he's rocked and it's like incredible to watch and then swab jamie is throwing these nuclear missiles like he's you know when you watch a, a magician do a trick and you watch him do it twice no. three times like okay i can start catching no. on to this you know i've never i've never watched a magician rob i don't know what well like. you just watched it right now bailey and swap you know? did the same trick three times well and, we saw and, right in the in the first matchup right which surprised us in the first 30 seconds he dropped suave jamie when when suave jamie was michael Chandler, he just pinged him with a one two three out of nowhere dropped him and it was like whoa yeah exactly yeah. what you're talking about so yeah he was just pulling out those quick combinations like a magician all right there you go, out the hat. Pick something cool to rob, all right? You play RP, it's like a sorcerer or something. A magician, bro. What's a magician a ever done? You got a wizard, a sorcerer, a, a bloody warlock's better than that, you know? Swab Jamie gathered all seven Dragon Balls and he went Shenron. <laughs> well, Driz did, I think. But there we go. Driz is through <laughs> to the semifinals. Can we, can we have a look at the bracket really quickly? Just to, because I feel like we've got an yeah, influx of uh, some people joining us. Well, even if it's not updated, we, we know who just won. So we should okay. So on the left-hand side, Fadenator took on Dirty Dave in our first uh, quarterfinal matchup. Fadenator came through. Great performance, 2-0. and I'm the GOAT and Dex Premacy had a great series there as well. But Dex Premacy, 2-0 and over GOAT. So it's Fadenator against Dex. But we just saw Driz, Suave, Jamie. They went to a best of three in the final moments. But Driz takes the decision in the third matchup. He's in the semi-finals, and he will fight the winner of our next matchup here, our last Oliveira Alter Ego versus Michael Chandler. It's Spooky versus EK Mixups, and Rob, they have had a road to get here. The pair of them had some sneaky, difficult matchups, but they've made it. Yeah, 100%. EK Mixups got by a dangerous Nazneen to get to the quarter quarterfinals, and, and this guy's Spooky. You know, he is like the dark horse. I I think in in this whole tournament because to get by easy work gg easy work gg in my opinion is one of the best out there the best there is and spooky is i mean his name is it, it, you know represents him well he is spooky great ground game we remember his side control ability um from the previous game ufc4 but now he's developed the striking bailey and he is the full package here we go the fight's about to start let's get it in. let's get it let's get it going Ooh, this is foul there we got cancelled that's kind of scary i don't know about that all right spooky with the Michael Chan to pick up. Starting it out. Pull counter. Well, just, I keep saying pull counter when the counter's not coming. Just a pull into the takedown. Let's say that. Drain all the stamina on both sides, though, with Ignite. So great work and the turning sidekick. I love to follow up. Look how much stamina they've lost. We're not even a minute in. <laughs> They're going hard. They're going hard early. And uh, Sicario getting his leg caught. Spooky. You don't want Spooky on top of you early. You do not oh. want them. You do not want him in side control. And that is what is happening right now. Sicario hearing his funeral music playing in the background early. Yeah, that is EK Mixups on Sicario there, if anyone doesn't know and hasn't been following. 
all the way through. And you got, you got to give appreciation to anyone that knows how to chain that suplex together against the fence. So great work by Spooky, putting a suplex together for us now on the back. Grappling wise, we'll see how the skill matches up because in top position, Chana's good. But if the sweep comes and we've seen it multiple times, you don't want to be stuck on the bottom if you're Marco Chana. Definitely not. And Spooky has some very quick flicks, very scary denies on top two. And there's the takedown, turns it, gets him again. And, and if he's able to get the takedowns this easily, uh, mix ups is going to have a long night against Spooky. Yeah, I mean, we, we saw the grappling matchup earlier on uh -oh. in some of the other fights. It's usually whoever got top position was able to keep it. Now a crucifix with two elbows, three elbows coming through. Four Threaten elbows. Oh. I'm going to count these off and a deny. Oh, God. Down. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Taking his time. Six. Seven. Oh, look at that he's cut. open. He's split open. And he's out. Mix-up's taking some damage, though, Rob. Dude, this is spooky guys wheelhouse this is what he's notorious for and then he started adding to this is what got him to oh. the ball the ball game here oh. right here this oh work. might be over it's gonna be over look oh at these ground and pound shots and it's already over steps in he's unconscious he put him out i wouldn't even a tko that is some serious is impressive just... ground and pound i mean look, you know we don't see these side control finishes anymore because this got changed so much within the game they had to nerf it so people could get out of it uh, there are still power transitions out there that perhaps could be tried next time if he finds himself in that spot again. But Spooky is the reason when you come to the ESFL, you've got to know all the areas of the game. Because if you can't defend that position, you will just lose to players like Spooky. Yeah, I remember when I used to stream UFC 4, a guy named Spooky would come up in my matchmaking and he would make me rage, Bailey, and I would be screaming, you're this, you're that. But the reality was I just could not get away from this guy's side control. And I was trending hard, so he is very scary. And that was probably the most dominant win we've seen throughout this tournament. Oh, yeah. Look, I can't even believe it. It was Bailey a minute and a half. We're already into round two right here. Spooky, got to be happy with that one. Now it's mix up with Chana, and he looks like he's trying to do the same game plan. Goes for the single leg. Spooky says no, and I can tell he's already moving to his uh, right, away from the right hand of Chandler and banging the straight at the angle, which is nice to see. Oh, nice. That was a nice little animation there from Sicario now on top. We'll see what he can do. I don't think he's got the same sort of game that Spooky has, the same sort of flick, flick ability, but let's see. Yep, gets a nice little flick there. And gets to, look at that. Look at that from Spooky. Oh, flicks him, counters him, Bailey, and oh my God. We talk about this, so everybody's taken Oliveira down so far. Has been swept. It's a dangerous game, apart from Spooky last time. He didn't get swept. And now he's swept. Mix-ups. He gets to his knees. 3.30 on the clock, though, already. We're seeing these grappling exchanges happen. Bailey, I just got to give a shout-out to the people that cleaned up the octagon from that last bloody exchange, because it's looking pristine for this fight. So shout-out to the guys cleaning out there. Thanks, Boiler. Thanks, Feckett. Uh, as long as it's not one of those old Fox events where they used to come in and spray paint the mat halfway through the show. <laughs> <laughs> they spray, they spray paint the maybe we shouldn't. Maybe we shouldn't <laughs> talk about that. Maybe we shouldn't. Let's keep it on the vibes. Okay, okay. Double, double oh, hooks in. Pat him. flat now from Spooky. Shots coming out. Hasn't postured up yet. Wants to control position. Hunts for the choke. If he gets the tap now as well. I mean, this would be so impressive. He's got a full drain on the struggle. This is bad, bro. He's Mix got it. hasn't done anything. Mix-ups, no fake, no attempt to get out. Oh, what? Wait, what, what just happened? Is he oh, now no. going for... Wait, is he trying to set up a, a one-shot sub, or did he just slip off? It, it seemed some... like he just slipped off. It, it looked like he was going for it. He had the stamina advantage, and then he just kind of slipped off. That was weird. Chat will tell us. Yeah, they probably Yo, Jakey, won. what happened there? <laughs> Double shots to the body now, though. Heavy on top. You do not want Spooky on top of you. It's been proven. Is he going to get side control? Rob, we're back here. Has he got enough time in the round, though, is the question. That was crazy. I think Matt, Michael Chandler might have just won the race, Bailey, and from the bottom, but... I mean, if go. you... You know, it's like... Uh, you know what? Let's not get... I'm getting out there with the references today. I'm like, talking about that Justin Timberlake film with the time, running, you I'm know? rubbing off on you, man. Let's go. And you're just like, where they have to do the time <laughs> war, and then you have to wait till the opponent's clock ticks down, and you do it last second, you know? He's, he, he's basically a race. It's fair enough, but it's it's yeah. risky to, to wait right before it, but he did. Yeah, I think certain positions, you, you, you never lose 
the race, like no matter what. So that that's interesting. I need to learn that though for my game. But here we go, back to these professionals. Round one, 10 seconds left on top. Spooky in control. You know, he is cruising. He has already won the first fight and it, and it seems like his opponent is a little rattled in my opinion. Mr. Mixup is a little rattled in this fight. Yeah, I mean, he came out trying to take him down, and obviously that completely backfired. One significant strike, unfortunately. Mixups has had a tough road to, to get here tonight. You know, he, he's had to come through some top competition. He had to come through Mad Dog, and then Nanzim, or Naznim, or, you know. <laughs> it's confusing. Naznim, but came in as the number sixth seed. Spooky came oh, in as nice. the, number, the number 14th seed here tonight. And I believe he is the lowest rated seed still in the tournament. Uh, so he's done so well to get through this far based on where he was seated at the start of it and still looking like a world beater. For sure. And Spooky's never really given up on UFC. You know, he's always just been playing the game, streams the game on Twitch. Go check him out. And he has just been adding to his game, sharpening and just staying in this super dangerous state of war. Like Conor McGregor against Khabib when he was guzzling proper 12. But instead, he's, he's sober, Bailey, and, you know, and, he, and he's here to win. But on top... Mixups finally able to have a oh he's gonna let him up he's like what's up let's let's strike I don't want none of that side control a wise move we've seen how horrible it is it has made it to the second round for the first time in these two in these matchups so we'll see if there is more striking then right into that uppercut that was well done by Mixups who does need to start mixing oh, up sick. beautiful judo counter on the takedown exactly what he needed well preempted is exactly what you expect from the EK camp guys who get 100%. in there together in the gym just practicing things like that on each other until we all get the timing down and if it becomes reactionary that's what it was it was beautifully done well put bailey and and um and that's what you want to see from mix-ups as an ek fan you know his teammates are cheering him on hitting a move like that means he's he's not broken yet he's still there mentally he's still fighting he's still he's still doing what he needs to do and, and that's that's what you want to see but dang he's doing so good with his takedown defense right now so mix-ups does not want to go to the mat no, he does not. He's going to step through to side control. See if Mixups can give him a bit of his own medicine here. And there's that same sweep again. So he just went straight for the, the full guard, the full mount pass there. Unless I, it was very quick, but I, I don't think he faked or set it up. Just went straight for the transition. It was denied and he got reversed. And yep. that's, he got flipped. Again, again, getting spooky. That's, that's a risky move. Definitely. And, and when Spooky's on top of you, you know, you got fear in your soul. But nice deny right there on the right side by Mixups. Mixups has to figure out a way to get up and not take too many of these shots. I don't think Charles has the the hardest ground and pound in the game. So some guys hitting you right here is scary. Oh, he's going for the Tars! He got oh the Tars! Oh my god. Okay, so we're draining the stamina right now. It does look like Mixups is just going to win this because he is ahead. So yeah, he should he just deny it. pull out of it. There we go. Into the side saddle himself. That's great work by Mixups right there. Beautiful work by Mixups. He's he's hanging in there, man. Mixups starting to cook a little bit, in my opinion. Look at these elbows too, and, and, and Spooky able to catch one of those, Bailey. And so you know, get him out, get out of the danger zone for Spooky. Yeah, I mean, he can ride this second round through from this position, but it all comes down to the third and final, if that's the case. And I do wonder if it does go to a mirror, who they're going to pick on either side he'll hook a 10 there but nothing's coming off 10 seconds left gonna just hold this one out it's been another tough round though i mean i, I don't know who's won this one it has been a tough round bailey it's hard to choose because it's like it's constantly it constantly seems like it's mix-ups kind of surviving spooky and getting out of these situations what did the what did the judges have to say well mix-ups did, the... did did land more shots i mean it, it does right. look like you know spooky wasn't able to get much ground and pound off but right again it's uh you know he got sweeps these shots on the feet are probably what's going to take it for him 100 percent, because we don't really see spooky connect with with anything so far on the feet oh yeah you're right that's the damage right there that's all mix-ups and then these elbows too are pretty nice land a couple flush elbows and able to get out of a lot of precarious positions is uh mix-ups fighting very good right now really showing why he is in this tournament you see a bow of respect this is a tough fight they, they both know what they're in store for here here we go all right and immediately the double leg attempt denied though mixups knows what's up and he's gonna be vigilant now and i imagine the more of these he denies the more the confidence is growing for mixups yeah i would agree he's like okay i could survive i got great he's got great takedown defense mixups has great takedown defense good denies 
and, and he's starting to cook a little bit. Nice body work as well, Balian. And uh, this is the third and final round, though. He's got to go hard this round. He's got to do some damage. It's back to the half guard position. Now, it was the full round transition before that got mix up swept. Just went straight through to that side control right there. Timed it during the ground and pound from the bottom there from Spooky. But nice job getting straight back to the half guard. Very good, very good. And there's the stamina advantage for mix-ups. Gets that nice denial. And he's able to compete here while on top. Oh, nice sneaks in that full mount position. Oh, oh, Heel that's in. Again, stamina-wise, stamina I think Spooky's uh -oh. a little bit further ahead right here. But nice job. Wow. <laughs> Straight away Beautiful. transition out. Yeah. I mean, in those hook positions, because there's so many different submission positions, sometimes you can forget that you're in one that you don't know, like, the defenses to because you've got True. to learn which way if your opponent's trying to get out you know there's two directions you've got to learn the two directions animations for every position so sometimes you jump and find yourself in a submission and you think you can you, you're concentrating on racing the stamina but forget that you they could just transition out and you don't know what it's going to look like 100 percent and they're all so different like you know certain positions you can race for free and, and never it's just it's a crazy game down there um in usc5 I mean, it's, it's good it's a it's a mind yes yeah. much good. better than four in my opinion much more not like, like those mini games much more like human yeah. chess which is good as it should be and now full uh excuse me oh dang you know mr chandler is doing well right now mixups is, is controlling spooky here which is good and you know the more time you spend on the ground with someone the more you do learn their game which is why it pays to be as versatile as possible because you could be amazing at side control but he only got to side control once and now he's not letting it happen so you need to have a plan a b c and d and if you can go in every position which mix up looks like he can you can gain more confidence shut down those areas of your game like floyd mayweather would take away those weapons until you can just start taking over the fight and that's what he started to do the tricks of spooky have not worked in these second and third rounds and now he's just getting tapped with this consistent ground and pound from the top position and now some actual posturing up and this is punching through the block and doing damage and there's a rock that's huge for mix-ups rocks him lands a few big bombs with michael chandler and just kind of clipping them i mean those are no fun to get smoked oh there's the straight down the pipe hook straight hook down he goes that is it what a <laughs> bloody finish just when we thought from that first performance it was going to be a Dang. wash ek's mix-ups stays in the fight stays vigilant slowly starts to adapt to the game plan of spooky and puts him out man this tournament is crazy this tournament is absolutely insane these guys are so well matched up you you really saw mix-ups evolve right there i mean he came back from adversity from that first first fight balian and then he like like you said methodically is kind of downloading and learning the ground game outplaying really focusing on that defense that takedown defense countering positions i mean mix-ups is the real deal as well i don't know man who's gonna take this ladies and gentlemen spookier mix-up we're going to a best of three the third and final yeah we'll see who they pick as well because again both guys got their wins with michael chandler but last time that happened both guys went Oliveira. so we'll see what happens <laughs> yeah, I'm excited for this one. It's, 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 a, it's a much different uh, fight, right? These two are, are very much grappling the whole time. That's probably because Spooky is attacking the grappling because he's so uh, dynamic and dominant in the grappling exchanges. So you're not, not really seeing too much striking compared to the other fights in the tournament. But Mixups has some elite grappling. Everyone in this tournament has great grappling, but some guys still are specialty guys, and Spooky obviously special in certain situations. But it seems like Mixup mix-ups Bailey and it kind of has like you said it kind of has a read on him a little bit here yeah well I mean we're gonna see that, uh, I think they're both gonna lock in Chandler which would mean again the person on top is gonna have a big advantage with the uh, top game versus bot game stats but they both can find their moments and their opportunities or maybe maybe we'll just see more of a striking matchup this time <laughs> yeah yeah we'll see we'll see here we go I'm excited to see how this one plays out I think we're probably going to see grappling again because this is where the fights keep ending up. But that's yeah. why it pays, man. I mean, some people come in and they're strikers, and if they get taken down, they want to get back to the feet. But really, you can get caught up in a game plan where the takedowns Ooh. constantly keep coming. Nice get up straight away right there. And that was mix-ups initiating that one. But you have to be able to grapple because if you get taken down and you want to just get back up, it's very different from if you want to counter grapple and get your own grappling game going. You know, Then you're not having to live in their world. You can just drown them in their own. 
That's a great point because sometimes, you know, as a striker, you, you try to get back to your feet, but then you're just worrying about the takedown. You know they're going to keep diving. So if you're able to outplay them on the ground, yeah, it's super critical for a victory. Oh, my goodness. What was that? Lovely I blinked. Job. Already getting what a cheeky rock what up. Hit him? He's also busted the nose, I think, as well, or at least for the ribs, because we've got some lung damage appearing on Spooky. So we'll start to see some stamina draining, which will, you know, play into it, especially if we're going to hit the ground game going. That'll be really important with all these submission attempts we've seen so far. So that's great for mix-ups nice and early in this fight. So this is the big test here, Bailey. Can Spooky come back when he's losing? I, I feel like Spooky, when he's ahead, he's a killer. But when he starts facing adversity early, I'm not sure how he can deal with that. And we're about to find out right now. And for mix-ups, man, the mental, you know, fortitude you need to get beaten in two minutes oh. and then to rally back and refocus and be able yeah. to, some, you know, take this to a best of three. I mean, that is some real mental strength to just compose yourself, take some deep breaths, get in there and just stick to a different game plan that is not going to end up with you losing in the first, you know, opening round. Yeah, it's so, it's so critical for... A guy like mix-ups you know he, he proved the point to me everybody out there i mean the fans of mix-ups knows the ek camp knows what he's capable of but under the bright lights too yes they compose balian is is so crucial and now he's in control of this fight he's, he's beating out spooky here his elbows from the clinch we've already seen do some damage and we talked about the stamina from spooky he doesn't have the uh the lung symbol anymore but he's already lost chunks of that stamina especially if he's banging overhands like that Trying to get a rhythm, but man, he is just firing off Ooh. shots. And there's the takedown. He needs this. Spooky needs this desperately. And slow motion takedown there from Those Mr. Spooky, right. guys. Some frame <laughs> drops, perhaps. There we go. Into the sprawl position, but straight back. He... Uh, maybe, okay, I'm guessing something was Something there. weird happened. Yeah, something weird happened there. It looked weird. Props to Spooky. Look at that. What a sportsman. <laughs> Good sport for Spooky. 30 seconds left, though. That's a nice knee to the body there. Looks like it's going to be a leg kick. Fired it up the middle, and that's not going to save anyone's stamina. Jab, jab, pull. And this is how Spooky likes to set up a lot of these takedowns from the pulls, which, you know, you don't see very often. It's It seems, at least to me, easier to slip or level change into your takedowns than to pull backwards. But this is how Spooky is trying to set these up, and they're getting denied. Over and over and over again. I mean, Sicario has denied so many of his takedowns. Let's get a sap a little of, of Spooky's gas tank. It's going to play into his mental psyche. Like, I cannot get this guy down. And, and it's going to maybe force him to stand up with mix-ups who may... I mean, Spooky's got some great stand-up, but mix might be a little bit better. We'll see. Takedown denied. Find out. Nice and early right there. Trying to tap the inside leg. Yeah, Spooky really just trying to run these takedowns now. And... Mix up starting to punish more and more, going back against the fence, which is going to make these takedowns even harder to get. Definitely. Spooky's right in front of him. Seems like he's got some great footwork too. Spooky's kind of struggling with, with the range, the striking, and he really is just diving on those legs and he does it again. But man, this guy, Mix Ups, has figured out the problem of Spooky G. He's got the cheat codes. You know, he went into the the teacher's closet took the answers from the test and, and now he's just cruising well i mean <laughs> you know it, it certainly seems like that but again spooky's not really setting these up very well anymore is he he's kind of just waiting on the first reaction and then shooting rather than waiting for the probably the you know the a better moment to try and shoot seems to be overreacting a little bit and that's why some of these getting stuffed he probably has better moments to make his shots, but he's just been throwing them out there. Oh. 100%. 100%. And, and his stamina is starting to dwindle. And if he's able to get a takedown, I think he'll start getting real comfortable. But right now, he's very uncomfortable getting tagged, tagged, and tagged. And, and, and look at the, the, the shots from mix-ups. Oh, but there's a nice little slip uppercut. But oh, then he right hand. Shot. Beautiful oh, job. Then a knockdown as well. Let's see if he can get some ground and pound off right here. The stack oh, off bad. position, the block oh, is down, and this is going to be it, Rob. I think their right hand, no, needed one more shot. Just couldn't do it. Phenomenal performance by mix-ups here. I mean, to get beat so quickly by by Spooky, and, and now kind of kind of making Spooky look a little one-dimensional here with with his with his dominant play in round number two. Yeah, right hook. Big overhand there again, and Spooky off the back foot trying to wing, and that's a great job there by Mixup, who 
This is good for mix-ups going into the semis to have dealt with an opponent like this. He's going to be very fired up, very on point in a, in a matchup where you've had to, you know, maintain a, a high level of concentration. So good warm-up fight for the oh. next round because I do think he's about oh to take goodness. this fight and take a spot in the semi-finals. Drop Spooky there for the final time. Perhaps here comes the ground and pound, but no, slips off. Great job by Spooky. We're back to the feet. Yeah, such a beautiful performance because he really had to dial in, like you said, focusing on not getting taken down. Lands a right hand. Spooky in all sorts of trouble, just discombobulated. And now the stacked guard position, full stamina, and these shots are going to hurt. Hook, hook, straight. And that's all she wrote. GG, Spooky G. Yeah, a beautiful performance there and a great finish. Rallying back after losing that first matchup in like 30 seconds, a minute, whatever it was. EK mix up, showing the well-rounded game. Beat him up on the feet negated the grappling, punished him from top position, and Spooky, clearly a very talented guy. A Hamza Chemaev-like player can take you out real quick, but well done for mix-ups. So just recognizing the pattern, slowing the pace down, and just taking away all of his weapons until he made him fight his fight, Rob, and, he, and Spooky just couldn't compete there. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Made him fight his fight and was just able to deny those takedowns again and again and again. And then mix up started to start to get some real good confidence and just kind of plotted forward and just let his hands go and just started picking him apart stacked guard position when he had him on the floor and just kept drilling him and wow mix ups is man i'm really impressed because spooky is a it's a it's a hard skill check that's a dps check that's like hey i need to i need to watch out for this guy and if you get by spooky you know that you have some great fundamentals great adaptability and you have uh, some mental strength because Spooky's hard. He's hard to deal with, and uh, that's a huge win. I was still laughing at the DPS chat. What's his gear score? Rob? <laughs> Did you find out? Props hey, to Spooky, out. though. It's good. 2,900. Uh, props, props to Spooky as well because he is a prominent member of this community that does stream as well. So de definitely go support him if you're interested in learning a few things. But great matchup, Rob, and that's it. We are done. We are locked in for our semi final matchups. Should we take a look at the bracket to let the people take a know look. before we go? All right. So, semi finals. The first matchup is going to be Fadenator versus Dirty Dave. Just to run through what they've done so far. Fadenator had Megatony in the first round, got through him, got through Rep, and then we saw the best of three with Dirty Dave. He went two and oh. So, semi final matchup, he will be taking on Dex Premacy, who himself, you know, he had a, a bit of a tough run. You got CIA Webcam, EK Warrior, one of the best EK members there. And as we saw, he took out Goat. So, Fadenator and Dex Premacy is going to be the first matchup. And then on the other side there, Driz coming through Kieran KRO, then coming through WR Maxi. And we just saw him take Suave Jamie to a best of three and get it done, Rob, in a very dramatic fight. I mean, maybe maybe that's the fight of the night right now so far for on this side of things. And Spooky, man. Spooky did a good job, but EK Mixups eventually is the guy coming through with that win of a mad dog, Naznim. And then, of course, taking the three against Spooky after a tough first round. Yeah, it's, it's so hard to choose. Like, we have four Titans, four Legends that have just done so well, have looked so dominant throughout this tournament, have had to fight through so many tough opponents, face adversity, and now they are facing each other. And we still have four left. 64 competitors down to four now. And now we're about to find out who is going to enter into our finals but we still have these best of threes. And we're going to be switching up the picks too now. We're looking at Hendo and Rampage, right, Bailey? And so that's going to be a whole another ball game. A lot of power going to be thrown in the striking realm in this in this semifinals. We got Pride Henderson and the ultimate.